Welcome to Stop My Crisis. I'm your host, Vivian Gaspar. In this country, 44 million Americans have outstanding student loan debt. That is a crisis. And here with us today is John Philip Festa, who has been a practicing physician assistant for over 22 years. In 2016, Mr. Festa was voted the New Jersey Outstanding Public Education Physician Assistant of the Year in recognition for his work preparing college students to achieve their dream of a career in the PA profession. His new book, Reveal the Physician Assistant Within, is the basis of the curriculum for the Excel Pre-Physician Assistant Clerkship Program, which he has founded. Mr. Festa, thank you so much for helping people understand that there are alternatives to have more certainty with the career path that they choose when they go to college, well, to cut down on some wasted student loan debt, because it does happen. What compelled you to create this pre-physician assistant coaching program? Well, as you mentioned, Vivian, 44 million Americans have student loan debt, and that the amount of that student loan debt is $1.5 trillion. Trillion. And that, trillion. And that's actually um, more than double the uh, consumer credit card debt and it is the second uh, highest amount of consumer loan following mortgages. So that's even more than the credit card crisis people talk about. Yep. And it goes even deeper than the debt. I mean, it's also your time invested. If you sure. start off in one career path and then you change your mind for whatever reason, you now have more time that you have to repeat, not just the amount of debt you accumulate. So it's so much more than just debt though, because mortgage, at least you're buying a home that you live in for years. It's yes. the roof over your head. And so that you're telling me that this debt represents the course that someone's taking on for their whole career path. Yes. So that's certainly much more important than credit card debt. But I don't know if everybody realized that because you're always hearing on TV, these ads about consolidating credit card debt, but you're saying this is far more important of a decision. You choose the right path and you're using the money more wisely. Absolutely, because mortgages and other consumer debt is collateralized by your home, but student loan debt is collateralized by your future, your future earning potential, because that is all there is to back that up. And if you have a co-signer, that also jeopardizes their future. Uh, I'll give you an example, uh, students graduating college in 2015 will have to wait until 75 to retire at this point based wow. on the student loan debt. That's and then, true. I'm sorry, and then the parents as well who co sign that now also jeopardize their future, which they've worked so hard for their future retirement. So, if for any reason whatsoever, the co signer, usually the parents, normally, if the, the, the student, the child of the parents, for any reason they cannot make their obligation to pay back that debt after they get their degree, the parents are on the hook typically. Yeah. And they have to pay, and these aren't small payments. What do the typical payments look like? The average payment is $350 a month. Uh, the average loan is $39,000. However, that includes all sectors of education, from one-year programs through uh, you know, four-year programs. So if you have a four-year program, clearly your debt is higher. So if you're talking a four-year program, $350 could be on the low side a month. But if you wanted to be in the medical field, and you know that um, obviously that's going to, you know, more years of schooling, sure. more debt. Uh, what is the average amount of student loan debt for someone who comes out being an MD, for example? Okay, for physicians, uh, student loan debt is typically $400,000. Wow. With the average salary of a physician being $200,000. Uh, as opposed to, say, a physician assistant, physician assistant's average salary is about $100,000. Uh, and to the high end after experience, 150000 and also beyond that, I know, I know physician assistants have been in excess of $200,000, but the student loan debt for physician assistant is $100,000. That's amazing ratios if you yeah. think about it. Yeah. I mean, you, for an MD, you're paying 400000 and your average, you know, people sometimes go into private practice, or they work in a hospital, in a group. I understand there's different ways they can work. Sure. But to make two hundred thousand, we're obviously still talking about a gross salary, yeah. and you have obviously life. And I've actually met people in their forties and fifties who are doctors, MDs, still paying off their student loan yeah. debt. Yeah, Is that typical? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And even if you're in private practice, for example, where your income is going to be higher, your debt, your your expenses are higher. You have to worry about uh, workers' comp, staffing, rent, malpractice uh, insurance. Of course, yeah, yeah. And if, you, if you're in private practice you're paying that yourself as opposed to working for a, uh, a group where you might get a group rate or a hospital where the hospital picks that up. So they have a, but how is it a better idea or a good alternative 
uh, to be a PA instead? Well, the, the uh, ratio of, uh, of debt to uh, income, as you mentioned, is really good. But the profession itself is, is an excellent profession because it has a great work-life balance. Uh, you don't really have to deal with the administrative or business end of medicine as much. It's also a shorter period of time. Typically, physicians take about um, eight, 10 to 12 years to become a physician in their total education, whereas a PA can do it in six to eight years. Wow, 10 to 12 to be an MD. Yeah. And that's not even talking about going into surgery or something more specialized. Correct. That's just 10 to 12. Mm -hmm. And then to be a PA is a third less. Yeah, roughly. And it depends on the program you choose because PA programs are between 27 and 34 months. Wow, in that's, duration. that's definitely a savings. And of course, obviously people have to remember it's a wonderful idea and a professional choice to be an MD. But, uh, and typically if you, want, if you want to have a family, what happens? That means, aren't you putting off starting a family until you're older? And unfortunately for women, that's the ones who create the families, yeah. um, that could potentially pose health risks if you're now starting childbearing time and your mid thirties or higher, is that what you've seen? Oh, absolutely. And one of the uh, things that are attractive to becoming a physician assistant is that uh, you can, you have a variety of choices. First of all, as an MD, you are limited to the specialty that you choose, which is great if that's what you want to do for the rest of your life, it's fine. As a physician assistant, however, if you're young coming out of PA school and you're 25 years old and you want to work in say cardiothoracic surgery and carry uh, your cell phone, I used to say pager, but you know, <laughs> pages anymore pages. so but you carry your cell phone uh you know seven days a week and you, you want to do that that's fine but maybe after six seven ten years you don't want to do that anymore that you can then vacationing. how do you vacation relaxed well i mean you're, yeah yeah you, know, you don't have that you have that hanging over you maybe when you're younger you can do that but when you're as you get older you might want to change or you may have an interest change the thing about physician assistant, uh, the profession, is that you can go to any specialty that you want. So f a, a good fit for, say, cardiothoracic surgery would be to go into cardiology. So you're not in the OR anymore, you're working in an office, but you could go to dermatology if you wanted to. You can do any uh, switch of specialty. Now, people talk about money as an arbitrary thing. Oh, it's just more, but what is the real effect that you've seen? Because when someone's carrying this level of debt, I mean, there has to be a percentage of these students, for whatever reason, they're now in their 20s, 30s, after they finish school, that for whatever reason, maybe they get sick, they, you know, people have car accidents, people have diseases that come upon them, there's reasons um, that their parents, the co-signers, now have to take over these payments as the co-signer. Sure. What have you seen that the ramifications are of that happening? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, one of the ramifications is that the parents now um, are responsible for the debt and that's going to put off their retirement. It's going to put off, first of all, their lifestyle, their quality of life. So, you know, when your child is 25 years old, in fact, 25 to 30, 28 percent of student of, of students 25 to 35 years old graduates are living home with their parents. So there's that aspect so as well. Have, they're probably in their 60s and 35 year old living at home. Yep, in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe so, their old room. They grew yeah, up that's in. true too. <laughs> but uh, the thing is that you know that that puts a strain on their ability to, to save even for their retirement. Much less the fact they have to take out of their retirement account perhaps to pay this debt down. Or what about if it's unfortunately makes it more challenging for them to pay their regular bills? Yeah. They're now in their 60s or maybe even 70s, depends on how much student loan debt we're talking about. You're talking about them being overly generous and co-signing for MD level doctorate school. Yeah. And now maybe they're having difficulties. You know, they want to retire, but they have to pay their mortgage still. Yeah. Maybe they had to remortgage their house to even assist further. Sure. They're not taking the vacations they've been looking forward to for the last 40 years while they were working. Sure. And, but, you know, it, the, the money that you're talking about, uh, medical school, $400,000, that's a huge sum of money. But even a college graduate from undergrad, you know, we're talking about thirty nine, forty, fifty, seventy five thousand dollars $75,000. Um, that's a lot of money too. I mean, and most people that would have a, a serious effect on their lifestyle. I mean, and that you, causes stress between family relationships as well. Uh, you know, there's, there, there are falling outs between uh, children and parents. Sure. Develop. But, and then there's, it goes beyond that too. It goes animosity developing between spouses as well. Uh, not just, it's not just parents. I mean, parents sure. could start having some animosity toward these kids. What did you do to me? Exactly. How did you affect my life? Exactly.
I mean, at, we're in our 60s and we still have someone in our 30s living with us. Where's our privacy? Sure. And, and we're supposed to be empty nesters. Yep, yep. Exactly. What happened? And and the point too of, the, of uh, our program is that we try to uh, give students a feeling or an idea of what the PA profession is. Because if you go into a professional program versus say uh, a liberal arts degree, uh, but if you go to a directed program, you know, law, engineering, medicine, physician assistant, um, the uh, job opportunities out there are much greater. And for PAs, our job opportunities are growing, uh, expected to grow by thirty percent between twenty fourteen and twenty twenty four. Wow, 30%? Yeah. Is that nationwide on average? Uh, nationwide and beyond, they expect as well. So there's something that they could feel that they're going to spend the money and time and energy to go to college in the various levels thereof. Yes. But at least they'll feel confident that they can then get a job afterwards. Exactly. And so many times you're hearing reports that people graduate from whatever their focus was and they can't find a job. Exactly. And with the physician assistant profession, um, the uh, market is growing so fast. Um, I believe it's a uh, U.S. News and World Report calls it the number three fastest growing career in the country. And Forbes calls it the number one career in the country. Uh, yes, that's very impressive. Yes, yes. And in fact, um, it, healthcare in general is considered the number one uh, sector uh, in the country in terms of being job, uh, a job with job security and recession proof, so to speak. Now, I know a lot of people watching are probably wondering, wait a second, we thought it was doctors and nurses and well, everybody else you might find in a hospital, radiologists, for example, or uh, x-ray techs or whatever. What, let's start with defining, what is a PA? Okay, a PA or a physician assistant is a medical professional that's trained uh, in medicine. We uh, take uh, our courses, our medical, our, our courses with medical students often in the same classroom. Uh, basically, it's a master's level medicine uh, program, and as opposed to a doctorate, we uh, have a didactic portion, just like physicians do in their training, and we also have a clinical portion, like physicians do. What physicians have though is a residency uh, portion that's after medical school itself. We do that in our last year of PA school. And we work under the supervision or with the supervision uh, of a physician. And so you're working with the supervision of, uh, of a physician, rather. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> what are the limitations? I mean, I always like to bring out what's the positives as sure. well as the negatives. So you know what you're getting into. Okay. Absolutely. So the way the uh, physician assistant profession works is we take a national board. Physician assistants take a national board that uh, tests our competency, and that covers how much or what we can do. Essentially, physician assistant can do everything or is trained to do everything a physician can do, uh, except we can't be first surgeon. There has to be a first surgeon in the room, but PAs can be second surgeon. Uh, then it goes down to the state level where the state puts its restrictions on practice, and then it goes institutional and then to the physician themselves. So they're, they're really getting a lot of benefits with extremely little limitations, but the, uh, I believe that the, de the benefit you mentioned of having a higher quality of life with a lot less financial burden, and of course a third of the time invested sure. in going to school, really outweighs the little bit of negative that you just outlined. I mean, to me that's uh, positive to really outweigh the negatives. So I also wanted to know, when you're talking about the schooling, what is your program offering? You mentioned this program, and now I'm very curious. Sure. Tell me about the program. Well, the program is a four-month program, uh, and it is 200 hours, a clock hour program. And what we provide is uh, the experience that physician assistant or pre-PA students need to even apply to PA school. We provide a shadowing experience and a direct patient contact experience, both of which are required to apply. We also then do uh, didactic training online, where we do training for how to write the personal essay, which is actually the most important part of the application to get you into PA school. Is it, wait, wait, I gotta ask, is it difficult to get into PA school? Yeah. What are the statistics on acceptance? Sure, uh, in 2015, 16, there were 100, over 190,000 applications put into PA school with 8,600 uh, enrollments. So that's about a 4.5% acceptance rate. Wait, only? Four and a half percent of all yeah. applicants are accepted as P into PA school. Yep, that's true. Yes. That's a very, very yes. small fraction. Yep. How do you assist an applicant on raising those numbers of acceptance? Well, to what the, level? Well, uh, the success rate of our program of having uh, students accepted the PA school is ninety-seven percent. So you're taking someone from four and a half percent to ninety-seven percent. Yep. That's incredible. 
Yes, and we do that using um, the psychology of communication, uh, neurolinguistics, and we teach them basically how to communicate and utilize the experiences that they get through our utilization part of our program, patient shadowing, um, PA shadowing and patient experience, and taking that and using that to create a connection of rapport with the interviewers. And while they're doing that, learning that sort of psychology of communication, they are also growing in their own way of how they relate to patients. And the idea is to have them to feel as if they are truly a PA already. Uh, we give them experiences working on a healthcare team as well, and uh, hence reveal the physician assistant within. That makes so much sense. Um, is there a lot of hands-on? Is this just an online course? What is the, I and mean, I understand that you have the shattering mm -hmm. course, that's a component. Yeah. Uh, and the book, uh, tell us about the book and how did you, is this a workbook? How does that work? Well, the book is basically uh, the program curriculum, uh, and I put it out there because I wanted uh, students to have an opportunity to get a feel for what we do, and the book is, in itself is very helpful. Uh, the full program, of course, would be much better because it is practical. There are three phases to it, direct patient contact, and that includes you know, uh, doing quality of life surveys on the patients and reporting to the healthcare director's team uh, at the facilities that we have. We have 22 facilities in New Jersey that we partner with and about 10 physician assistants that work with us. Part two is the physician assistant um, shadowing part we discuss. Mm -hmm. And we really, you know, shadowing is what they need on the application. We provide mentoring. Our physician assistants stay with our students and are available to them throughout their career. And mentoring is tremendous. Yeah, absolutely. I had a mentor myself and it is uh, very important. And the third part would be the didactic portion something like 40 modules online that talk you through how to write your essay. We do an essay review, how to, uh, what to expect at an interview, and then the advanced interviewing techniques, and then finally we do mock interviews with the program as well, which are videotaped, and um, the student then will be able to view their performance and the critique, which is also on the videotape. So it's very comprehensive. This is yes. not just a couple hours. No, it's a 200 hour program. Uh, over a period of four months. We make it user friendly. Students don't have to like quit school or quit their jobs to do it. We, uh, the schedule is extremely flexible and we work around their schedules because we understand what they're going through. We've been there. So you've grown this from being localized to national and that is that the level that you're looking to expand in yes. and take it up? Yes. At this point we have uh, our program is in New Jersey. The clinical program itself is only in New Jersey. I have one site in New York however. Um, but the online programs, and we do have everything we offer from the didactic point of view, is available uh, throughout the country online, including an online coaching program, which is an eight-week program that we provide one hour a week with the PA uh, doing a discussion on the topics in the book and you know, topics that we cover in the per in the clerkship program. And so, a student in California would have access to a PA to uh, talk to and ask advice for beyond what we just teach you in the program. They'd be like your coach. That is so really, really helpful that you have this ability to help people nationwide. I mean, this is a TV show that airs nationwide. So you want to make sure that everyone who is watching you right now does have the availability to take advantage of it. Absolutely. And especially with, I just find it really helpful that so many times students are just thrown into an area, but the mentorship aspect that you mentioned, I think is critical. What have you noticed to be some obstacles that your program is having to take something from only a four and a half percent acceptance rate to 97 percent? What do you think are the top key factors to make that huge leap? Well, I think one of the things is that uh, most college students don't really have any idea of how to have a professional interview uh, for a profession. And uh, PA school is uh, also very unique, and so that, that interview is also unique. They're really looking for, if a student has made it to the interview table, they deserve to be there. Uh, but now they have to convince and show the PA interviewers that basically they have the right kind of personality to be a PA. It's about empathy and caring and compassion, but you don't really want to say, uh, my greatest quality is empathy because the conversation's over. So we teach them how to use their experiences and actually uh, paint the picture for the interviewer so that they actually determine, wow, this person very empathetic and like me. Again, we try to get that uh, shared experience, one of the techniques we use. Uh, shared experience being, you know, basically, you know, what's your greatest quality? Rather than saying empathy, talk about an experience you had 
that displays your empathy. And I guarantee you, first of all, that that PA interviewer has had a similar experience and they'll start to basically feel you to use the colloquialism. Can you give us a, one or two uh, quick stories on a student that has emerged from the program just feeling more enlightened on how they can just, yeah, I'm still stuck on the four and a half percent that uh, I yeah, need Let me tell you something. The, hard, number for me. the hardest thing to do is when we have students that are too, too shy. They have a great GPA. You can tell they're a good person, but they're just too shy. And it's so difficult to pull personality out of someone who's really shy, but we've done that. We've had a student that was uh, shy and her grades were actually, we counsel with, grade, with grades as well, do academic counseling. Uh, she, it took her three tries because of this thing, uh, this issue with the uh, personality, getting the personality out of her. And she, in the meantime, she did have to build her grades up. But uh, it was the most exciting thing to know that you got someone who I would have to say had no shot be, be, only because of shyness and then uh, deciding to change her career later in college to PA. But to get that person in school, and then indeed every time we get a phone call, usually, often we're the first person they call, not even their parents. So no, but you're the ones who have to get the yeah. parents may help pay for it. Yeah, yeah. When it's nice and parents are encouraging, but you're the actual facilitator yeah. that got them to the level of they were accepted. And that's the thrill of it. That's why we do it. Uh, I mean, you're just lighting up with yeah, the I mean, why we, you're doing it. The we, why is on your face. We, and in fact, we have relationships with our students that last for years. Our first student, uh, my wife and I, still have dinner with her every three or four months uh, just to catch up. And this is someone that I mentored myself when it was just me, one facility, and one student uh, six years ago. And we still get together. She's a PA now for three years. And she's like a daughter to us, you know. And they all are. Or they're like our kids. Congratulations on having uh, a program that you gave birth to, you created. It was something that was a genius moment for you, but it's truly helping people change their lives, which of course is the medical field. So the ripple effect is immense. Yeah. Congratulations, John. Great job. Thank you. And that is how, if you listen to someone like Mr. Festa, who has now created an amazing curriculum, to choose an alternative career that might be something worth looking into, there's so many different ways that that can stop your crisis.